the holidays are coming up and I just want to sit down and have a real conversation with you about something I feel like a lot of families should be having around this time of year. This is the time of year where families come together and a lot of times you haven't seen each other in a while. Like me, I live across the country from most of my family so I don't get to see them like that, especially with all this virus stuff going on. Anyway, what I'm about to say in this video is extremely important for families to start talking about. Because I think in today's time, the whole purpose of holidays and everything that happens on holidays as far as spending money on gifts that we can't afford just to prove to people that we love them is sometimes done in vain. There's a lot of mistakes that we've been making as a whole forever and it's not improving at all. This isn't just for American holidays, this goes for literally any holiday. It just so happens that we're getting closer to the winter holidays. So we're gonna have, you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's Eve, that kind of stuff. And on top of all that, throughout the year in general, we're gonna have a bunch of different cultures celebrating a bunch of different holidays. And the same mistakes I'm talking about in this video applies to everyone. It's time for you and I to sit down and have a conversation that's real. And that conversation starts with this one sentence. Don't make this mistake. Don't make the mistake of being that guy or that girl who goes broke trying to show love to their family and friends. Don't make the mistake of going to the mall, going to Best Buy, or going online shopping and then spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars on other people just to show them that you love them without being financially prepared. Don't make the mistake of doing all this and then proceeding to get on a plane and travel with said gifts without being financially prepared. For some reason, we put so much pressure on ourselves to give. Not to give in general, but to give beyond what we're capable of giving. And I've done this myself too. It's almost as if the more expensive the gift we give a person is, the more we love them. And that's just not true because last time I checked, money does not equal love. Gifts don't equal love. That's not something that can be bought. And it's getting hard for me to watch because it's like a trap we keep falling for year after year. And since most of the expensive holidays happen towards the end of the year, it automatically starts off your next year at a disadvantage. And that disadvantage is not being prepared for the expected. So if you can't even be prepared for the expected, how could you possibly be prepared for the unexpected? Let me explain. You've probably seen or heard a lot of these disadvantages and they sound a lot like this. Man, y'all are expensive. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna pay my bills after this. This is getting ridiculous. Y'all know I gotta live after Christmas, right? Man, it's that time of year again already. I'm still paying off the gifts I paid for last year. Granted, a lot of these things are said in a joking manner, but it's not a joke. This is an actual issue that needs to be focused on and it's something that gets passed up all the time, but it's a real issue that exists. And it just so happens at the beginning of the next year, there's a lot of expenses you need to be thinking about. But a few months before then, all you can think about is what am I gonna get? What am I gonna get for my friend, my son, my daughter, my mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents? What am I gonna get for them? I gotta show them how much I love them and how much I care about them. And that's fine, that's commendable. But you need to figure out a way to afford these things because if you can't, even though it's commendable, it really isn't smart. It's never smart to go in debt for someone else's temporary happiness, especially when it takes you almost a full year to pay that off. They might have loved what you got them, but you have to think about what happens when you go back home and you return to your life. Think about what happens when you go back to work and you find yourself having to work twice as hard, more hours, just so you could sustain the lifestyle that you already had before the holidays started rolling around. Because at the beginning of the year, there's a lot of lease renewals going on. And nine times out of 10, your rent is going up. You have other responsibilities to take care of. And this goes for everybody, even if you're not living on your own yet, even if you're still in school, even if you work a part-time job or a full-time job, the same principle applies. Because making the mistake that I just talked to you about will hold you back financially no matter where you're at in life. The way I see it is this. When you go back home and you go back to your life, you still gotta eat. You still gotta live. You still gotta go places. You still need to be able to sleep without stressing about your past decisions. But we just keep on giving beyond our capability. And what a lot of us don't realize is you can actually give your way into poverty. So don't be that person who spends all this money on family and friends without the means to do so. Don't be that person who's out here trying to impress others with how much money you spent on Christmas gifts. Don't be trying to go all out and overextend yourself just so you can show everybody, hey, I have money, I can give you expensive gifts. Don't do that. I'm telling you right now, 
It's not worth it. Don't be that person emptying your bank accounts on gifts and presents during the holidays and then turn around complaining about gas prices being too high or complain about the price of your basic needs like food, water, gas, the cost of living. That's not going to fly with me. Your pain is self-inflicted because the bottom line is those prices didn't just change overnight. But you know what did change overnight? The money that's in your bank account. Then the next thing you know is tax season where you may or may not get a tax refund. Then there's unforeseen expenses. You know, like you might go home and find that there's a leak in your ceiling. You got to take care of that. You might have a flat tire. You got to take care of that. You might get sick. You might have to go without work for a little while. These things are not uncommon. But what's very common is falling for the trap of Black Friday, where everything is on sale. So mentally, we allow ourselves to justify spending more money than we would have simply because everything is on sale. The TVs are on sale, the Playstations are on sales, the jackets, the phones, the clothes, the entertainment, the shoes, everything is on sale. So because it's on sale, I wanna get everybody something from here. Without even realizing you walk out of the store spending more money than you would have if there wasn't a sale in the first place. It's just like Thanksgiving when you see all this food and so you put too much on your plate, but you can't finish it all. Your eyes got too big for your stomach. It's the same thing as this, except this time your eyes got too big for your wallet. And now that I think about it, even before I started making a full-time income, I used to do the same thing, especially when it came to spending money on my then significant other, my parents, my siblings, my aunts, my uncles. Like I used to spend more money than I had paying for their gifts. And the way I think about it now is, that did hold me back financially, even though I didn't even have that many financial obligations at the time. Because even if you don't have any financial obligations, no one wants to walk around with empty pockets or like $20 to their name, like I did, because you can't do nothing with that. But what you gonna do, buy a Snickers bar? Come on now. And that's why I say, and I can't stress this enough, no matter where you're at in life right now, you need to obtain this mindset that I'm talking about in this video. Because if you don't, it's gonna translate to even worse financial habits in the future. That's why we need to change the quality of conversations that we have with our families during these times. For me, I'm someone who extremely dislikes small talk. Like, I'm not the type of guy who wants to sit around on the holidays answering questions like, so, how's work going? So, you seeing anyone? See any good shows lately? Like, that's great. That's awesome. But that is the last thing I want to be talking about when I'm with my family on the holidays because I just feel like there needs to be more substance to the conversation. Especially when they ask you stuff like, are you seeing anyone? It's like, well, if I was seeing someone, you would probably know about it before it's almost the daggone end of the year. You know what I'm saying? I'm just someone who likes to talk about the future, like my plans for the future, my goals, that type of stuff. I like talking about stuff like what I'm learning about. And I'm going to throw in a quick unpopular opinion of mine in there. I think it's extremely important for families to start talking about money. And I know it's considered to be like this taboo topic, but these conversations need to happen. I mean, I've always wondered this. Why is it that the questions that get asked at family events are always so general? It's just like, so how's work going? So how, what are you doing with your life? Pretty much. How's your dating life? You having any kids soon? Like these are the conversations that happen <laughs> at family events that people don't really want to talk about right then and there. Just being honest. Because literally, no one wants to talk about work because I just took this time off of work to spend time with you. So what, what makes you think I want to talk about work? And then when you ask about people's dating lives, like, look, everybody got Facebook. There is a big chance that if they were dating somebody, you would know it way, way before the family event even started. When you ask people if they're having kids soon, that's personal. They move on their time, not yours. I'm just speaking for everybody today. I'm gonna get off my soapbox, but the reason I'm saying all this is because it just seems like more families today make those general questions that no one really wants to talk about so important. But the question is like, hey, how are you doing? Are you happy right now? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you taking care of yourself financially? What are you passionate about? Those questions get asked far less often. I mean, sure, I've heard of family members talking about how they want to refinance the house or what car they want to buy next or what shoes they want to get, but I'm just going to be real. I've never been at any family event, whether it was a holiday, birthday, wedding, or anything, and heard any family member talk about what their savings goals are. Like, I've never heard anyone say, hey, my goal is to save up six months worth of expenses. I've never heard that at any family event ever. Like, you don't even got to put a dollar amount to it. Like, if you don't, if you want to talk about money, you do not always have to put a dollar amount to it. Because I get it, you don't want everybody to know your business. I don't either. But check this out. 
if you start the conversation like that with, hey, my goal is to save three to six months worth of expenses, you have initialized conversations around building up your finances and eventually building wealth. Because these conversations straight up don't happen that often. I've never heard anyone at any family event talk about how they plan to increase their income. I've never heard talk about investing or making your money work for you. These conversations are a lot less common, but they have the power to be a lot more beneficial to the entire family because this is actually something that can grow into a brighter future. I could pretty much guarantee that if these conversations actually happened and money wasn't such a taboo topic that no one was allowed to talk about, families around the world would have a lot more money to spend freely on holidays like Christmas or any holiday for that matter or any birthday or any event whatsoever without having to stress or worry about spending too much money up front and then having to go back to a life where they can barely afford their expenses. I just want to open your eyes to what life could look like if those conversations actually started happening in your family. And that's actually a big goal of mine. Like, I would love to hear the majority of my family talking about this stuff during the holidays. It doesn't have to be like for the whole time, but just for like a portion of the time, I would love to hear people talk about investing, increasing income, stuff like that, because these are potentially powerful conversations. I mean, I'm sure you'd rather hear that type of positivity and those types of conversations than hearing about your family members complaining about gas prices or complaining about any prices. Because I think one of the greatest gifts you can give a family is knowledge and an eye opening to a world that they've never experienced before, to ideas that they've never heard or seen before. And you never know how that might impact one person. I'm going to tell you a quick story before I wrap this up. One day I was just casually talking about investing and I really didn't think much of it. And then out of nowhere, my aunt called me. She hit me up, like telling me that I motivated her to start investing. And she started asking me questions like, well, which app should I use? Where should I invest? You know, what are your ideas? What do you think? And fast forward to now, now she's calling me up, talking to me about the research that she's doing on stocks. She's telling me what stock she bought this month. And we bounce ideas off of each other. It's really cool. I'm not saying you necessarily got to talk about stocks, but I'm saying beginning that conversation on any money topic, that is where the power is. So I'm going to leave you with this. What if we could change our bad financial habits and also change the conversations that we have with our families about money? What if we could minimize our financial mistakes while also building habits that solidify a strong financial future? Now that's a gift you can't put a price on. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.